Hello and welcome to the Divine Mercy Prayer Meeting and Holy Hour Novena for Our Nation. We are Dave and Joan Maroney, your Mother of Mercy Messengers. So excited to be here with you today. We've got a, a big group, 138 uh, uh, in the meeting. People keep coming in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the meeting. Welcome to you if you're viewing this on YouTube uh, after the broadcast. We are broadcasting from our home and office in Centerpoint, Texas, and we are an official apostolate of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception, as we are the Mother of Mercy Messengers for them. Right, so the National Shrine is in Massachusetts, but we're here in the middle of the country uh, in, in Texas, and we're happy to be joined with, with people from coast to coast and beyond here live, but then, of course, uh, via Zoom, I mean, uh, via uh, YouTube, of course, people all over the world. I think we've set a new record for our live <laughs> and, meeting. And so, all right. Well, of course, because we've got a fabulous topic and we've we've added about four or 5,000 people to Divine Mercy for America and Mercy Sunday Momentum, because all of you know how important <laughs> it is. We need grace. The world is in dire need of mercy. And too many people still don't know about the Feast of Mercy, about the divine mercy message and devotion, about the great graces, the unfathomable grace that God wants to pour out. You know, we all get remission of sin and punishment. We're teaching people that through Mercy Sunday Momentum, but also all the divine floodgates through which grace flow are open. And so there's healings, there's reconciliations, there's all kinds of miracles that we can have. Jesus said, ask for much. It's my desire to give much, very, very much. But I'm sad when people narrow their hearts and they ask for little. And so we are encouraging everyone to get prepared like never before and share this message with others. And that's what Mercy Sunday Momentum is all about. Now, we've been meeting like this, sharing the ways of praying for our nation, the way St. Faustina was specifically instructed by, by heaven itself from Jesus and the Blessed Mother. She told her to make a novena of holy hours of, on behalf of her country of Poland one time, another time to receive Holy Communion for nine days in a row for her country, another time the litany of the saints call upon all of heaven, do this for nine days in a row. And then the last time she was told to make a, a novena of praying the chaplet of mercy for her country. And the Lord would tell her, because of you, I am blessing your country. And she had written that if it hadn't been for the prayers of souls that are pleasing to God, nations would have been annihilated long ago. That's how important you are. That's how important your prayers are and every work of mercy that you do, everything in deed, word, and prayer. So we want to enhance this. We want to multiply this. And we want to do it with greater trust in the mercy and the love that God has for, for you for, and especially for sinners. And we've seen in the darkness, the, the world is, our eyes are being open to things that we never even would have probably thought about or even imagined when we were kids, right? Or even five years ago, who would have thought some things we would be coming across, uh, you know, anyway, we know. And so what we're doing is we've been meeting like this and sharing, praying for our nations this way for over 10 years now. But then via Zoom, we do it every month from the first through the ninth. And we started this in January of 2021. And we're happy to be here. It is March 2023. Before we do the holy hour, we have a guest speaker that speaks usually for about 15 to 20 minutes. And it's been wonderful. We have priests, we've had religious, we've had lay apostolates, we've had people that have had incredible healings and miracles through divine mercy. And today it is our pleasure to uh, welcome our friend, Don Nos, who we've met some years ago uh, when we were traveling across the country in New York. And we've given him um, more than 15 minutes because he's got so much to share. And since we are here in Lent, to, to I will call him an expert on the Holy Face devotion and the Shroud of Turin. And this is a time where we really, during Lent, need to unite ourselves with Jesus and understand uh, the depth of his love by pondering his wounds and his passion. And the Shroud of Turin helps us to do this. And Don's also going to be sharing a little bit about Our Lady of Garabandal, some of the things that happen there and the messages there and how they're tied to the Holy Face. So 
We welcome all of you and we welcome Don. And uh, Dave's going to start it with a, a quick prayer and then we're going to turn it over In to Don. In the of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And dear Lord Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. At this time in Lent, we ponder your sacrifice and your time in the desert fasting so that you will die on the cross and then resurrect from the dead. We believe that you are the son of God, the living son of the living God. And we ask your blessings upon this meeting. We ask you to bless uh, Don and his presentation to bring us all closer to your merciful heart. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, Don. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much uh, uh, for inviting me back this year. Now, it looks like I'm coming from the grotto. This is a grotto that's in Garabandal. Um, it's, it's, I call it the Holy Face Grotto, but it's called the Sacred Heart Grotto. Uh, Jacinta had a vision here. I'm gonna, all I'm gonna explain about that later. Um, but there is a connection you know, with, with the Holy Face, with the passion, with the shroud. Um, I'd like to make a disclaimer first. Um, the church has not authenticated uh, the apparitions of Garibaldi, uh, but it's not condemned. And it, it has been determined that the messages, nothing about Garibaldi, is contrary to the faith. And, and that's very important. Uh, so it's just that it's not been approved yet, but uh, it's not condemned. So, uh, so we could talk about it. Um, now, most people know me. I'm the president of the Society of the Holy Face of Jesus. I'm a member of the Confraternity of the Passion. And um, most people know me from that. So what I'm going to do today is uh, talk about actually my history with Our Lady of Garbandel. Um, the Shroud, the Passion, I started when I was young. And I also started with Garbandel when I was very young, a child. So I'm gonna give a little bit of my background first. We, we have a lot to unpack here. So with the messages and the events of Garibandel and then into the holy face of Jesus where it leads to the passion. So uh, let me um, first explain that uh, Garibandel is a very um, small town city in, in Northern Spain and uh, is a, 300 people who were living there at that time, uh, no running water, no bathrooms. Um, so Dave, if you could put up the first slide. Now, it, this is Mary Lovely, but what I wanna show you here is the terrain. Now up on top of the nine pines, and that's where the Blessed Mother would appear to the visionaries. Um, but the terrain, it's all rocky. It's, it's not dirt, it's not grass. And this is where the, the children would process up to, uh, to see the Blessed Mother on top of the pines. If you go to the second slide. So this is the children, you see them kneeling on these rocks. So I'm gonna explain a little bit more when we talk about ecstasy, uh, because what we're going to get into determining if this is authentic or not. Um, this particular, these, these ecstasies and what it really shows. Now, my background, um, I'm gonna start with, with my background. When I was uh, eight or nine years old, I was, uh, again, I started with the passion. Uh, Joey Lemongino, most people familiar with Garbandel know, was very close to my family. He was my brother, Johnny's godfather. Um, he loved my mother, my mother loved him. Uh, my mother's nickname was Lovey. Now in 1947, Joey, he was in the garbage business, him and his brothers and his sister. Um, but prior to that, they were in the coal and, and ice business. Joey, when he was a teenager, 1947, was filling up a truck tire for a coal truck. And he overfilled it and the tire blew up and the rim hit him uh, right at the bridge of the of the nose on the top, severing his olfactory and, and optic nerves. So he went blind and he lost his sense of smell. 
I think uh, number three, Dave, if you put up number three. Okay, so this is Joey Lomagino with Padre Pio. So Joey visited Padre Pio a couple of times uh, through his uncle. He didn't know, he didn't go there and meet Padre Pio. He didn't even know he was going to see Padre Pio. His uncle convinced him to visit Padre Pio. 1961, he went back a couple of times. And in 1963, Padre Pio rubbed him on the bridge of the, the nose and he received his sense of smell back. Now, his still, he did not receive his vision back, but he did receive his sense of smell back. Padre Pio healed him of his sense of smell. But that sense of smell was so keen after that event. Now, Joey was a walking miracle, uh, meaning medically he should not be able to smell because his olfactory nerves are severed. He's continued for the rest of his life having severed nerves. He should not have been able to smell. How keen his sense of smell was. His first presentation when he came back from um, putting things together for Garvin he, uh he's sitting in my mother's uh, couch on the couch in the living room. I was sitting right next to him. And Joey had a very loud Italian Brooklyn accent voice, you know, and my mother's nickname was Lovey. And uh, now I was like nine years old, 10 years old. Uh, no, but I was 11 or 12. So I'm sitting next to Joey and um, Joey, uh, Joey says, hey, Lovey, did you get new drapes? My mother looked at Joey and says, yeah, Joey, how do you know? Says, I could smell the newness of the fabric. And, you know, now I was young, you know, and I'm thinking of this and I'm like, wow, um, because it's sometimes like when you get into a new car, you can smell the new leather, you, you know, you would smell that it's new. He was able to smell the drapes that were behind him, that it was a new, fa uh, new fabric. That really impressed me. Now, originally, uh, Joey, even a lot of people don't know this, but when Joey was blind, we used to have all night vigils in the local churches. We would pray through the night. Well, they would, I would sleep. And I was young. I was like the apostles. I would nod off. But Joey had that loud voice. So he would lead the rosary. And I'd be sitting right in the pew near him. And um, so when it came time for the Holy Mary, for us, it was like, Holy Mary, Mother. And then I would nod off. And then his loud voice, Hail Mary, full of, and I would jump up, you know would wake me up, but we would have all night vigils in the local churches. And then when he got involved with Garbandel, what we did was uh, the original presentations was Garbandel, Padre Pio and Fatima. And a lot of people don't know that, but it was these three events that we started doing presentations on. Uh, there was a group of men and um, we had a van. I was the kid, I was, I don't know, 15, 16, I was the guy, I was the kid who carried the equipment. Uh, now at that time, we used a projector that had the slides that would drop down, right? Joey had a book with the slides in it and it was in braille. So Joey knew the slide that was shown and which one was going to be next. So he was able to describe it because he had it in his book in braille. That fascinated me. So th this is how I started, you know, with, with presentations. I was a kid that went along with, with Joey. Um, I don't know what year it was, but uh, when I first met Conchita, we did not actually meet name to name, but I was at Joey's house. And um, it's a funny story because uh, a lot of people were ushering Conchita into the house. I was already in the house, in the kitchen with Conchita's brother, Miguel. And, and the, uh, one of the cleaners that used to clean the house. And um, there was a whole crew of women bringing Conchita into the house. Conchita and I looked at each other. We made contact because I think we were the youngest people there. And, you know, a lot of the people were thinking like, wow, a visionary, you know. And I have to be honest with you because my first impression was uh, I looked at Miguel. And I said, Miguel, your sister is gorgeous. <laughs> so now, she was not married at the time, so, so I was safe. Uh, but that was my first, first impression. So then Conchita marched down the stairs to the basement. And you hear a lot of commotion. A lot of the women start yelling, we smell roses, the Blessed Mother's here, the fragrance. And the cleaning lady starts laughing. 
And so me and Miguel look at the woman, it was so funny. She holds up a can of flower scented aerosol. She said, I knew there was gonna be a lot of people down there. So I sprayed, you know, because it was musty down there. So, uh, so that was uh, my first encounter uh, with, uh, with Conchita. I used to work with Miguel. My, I have two other brothers. We all worked for Joey's Garbage Company. Um, I was a, a supervisor of a yard. Miguel worked for Joey as a welder. And uh, Miguel and I used to talk a lot. He was a very level-headed Miguel. You know, he was observant. He was uh, quiet, you know. And But he worked He worked alongside us um, not really that long, but then he went, he went back to Spain, okay? So, um, so we used to go at that time into different churches, and uh, and then we were asked to stop, uh, to stop going to churches anyway. So we used to go to private homes and and set up uh, um, the projector and and the, uh, uh, the the slides, and so we would do a lot of private homes. Right? So, uh, and that's pretty much when I stopped. When the bishop asked to stop. You know, we, we were obedient. That's one thing I have to say about Joey. He was obedient. No, no more in our diocese in a church. Uh, no confrontation, no, but just obedience. Um, so, you know, that, that impressed me also. Um, but again, I started when I was young. So I had a knowledge of, of Garbandel. And later in life, I found out I had a very intimate, if you could say um, Garbandel lived in me, when we unpack the messages, I'm going to explain more. Um, but there are some individuals who uh, authenticated in, in their minds, Garamandel, and uh, one of them was, uh, if you go to the next slide, Dave. Okay, Joey became a good friend of Conchita. Um, now, the, the next slide after this, Okay, this is Mother Teresa. Uh, Mother Teresa used to <clears throat> visit Conchita when she would come to New York. Conchita moved to New York. And um, Mother Teresa became very close to uh, Conchita. Uh, Mother Teresa said in an interview, uh, now that between, uh, she, she lived between 1910 and 1997. She first learned about the phenomenon in 1970. And writing later that, from the beginning, now I'm quoting Mother Teresa, I felt that the, the events were authentic. Uh, the Albanian founders followed the events of Garabandel with interest and personally met three of the visionaries. And she maintained a particularly close and prolonged relationship with Conchita. So when the saint would travel to New York, she would often meet with Conchita. Uh, can we go to that next slide, Dave? Okay, one, uh, another individual who um, became uh, a good friend of uh, Conchita was Padre Pio, St. Padre Pio. Um, he was uh, devoted to uh, Garabandel, to the Blessed Mother overall, but, but in particular Garabandel, um, he, he, he endorsed, um, if you will, you know, the girls. And, uh, Conchita went to visit him, but first of all, I'm going to show you, um, um, this is a letter that was uh, sent to Conchita, to the girls. They were addressed to the girls, but Conchita had the letter. This was from Padre Pio, and uh, this was in uh, 1962, he wrote this letter to the girls. And um, in the letter, the letter reads, this is in Italian, but, but translated in English, it reads, uh, dear girls, at nine o'clock this morning, the Blessed Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary told me about you. Oh, dear girls, about your visions. And she told me to say to you, oh, blessed girls of San Sebastian de Garabandel, I promise you that I will be with you until the end of the centuries and you will be with me until the end of the world. And then united with me in the glory of paradise. That's, a, that's some powerful letter, uh, a powerful message from the blood. I would love to hear that message. Now, he continues, together with this, I am sending you a copy of the Holy Rosary of Fatima, which the Blessed Mother ordered him to do. I give you recommendation to pray uh, 
because the world is on the road to perdition. Now, this is one prophecy, uh, you know, that Padre Pio made in 1962, you know, and it looks like he was right on the money, right? Um, and then he continues, they do not believe in your conversations with the lady, but they will believe when it's too late. So um, this was a letter written to Conchita. Now, Conchita didn't know who this was. She didn't know uh, it was Padre Pio. Um, Conchita said in an interview uh, that uh, she said, and I'm gonna quote, I remember that I received a letter in the mail that was addressed to me and the other three, Jacinta, Mary Loli, and Mary Cruz. They asked me what it was about, but since it was not signed, I kept it in my pocket until I saw the Blessed Mother that day. When she appeared, I showed her the letter and I asked her who it was from. The Blessed Virgin told me that it was from Padre Pio. As I didn't know who Padre Pio was, I didn't ask any more questions. After the apparition, I told people about the letter. A seminarian who was there explained to me who Padre Pio was and where he lived. So I wrote to him saying that when he visited my country, I would like very much to see him. He answered me in a brief letter saying, do you think I can go up the chimney? I was only 12 years old at the time. I had no idea what a cloistered monastery was. So, you know, a couple of things. This is a very powerful letter. Uh, number two, these girls were 11 and 12 years old. I'm not gonna go through each individual uh, with their age. No cell phones, no computer, no phones, uh, no running water, no electricity. They would have no knowledge. They conceded had no knowledge of what a cloistered monastery was. She never heard of Padre Pio, you know. Uh, but then she did have the opportunity to meet with uh, Padre Pio. You know, there was there was an event that upset Conchita and really the rest of the Garamondel crew. One of the messages was um, that Padre Pio was to see the great miracle. There's going to be a warning, uh, there's going to be a miracle, and an optional chastisement. So, um, so anyway, one of the, of the messages was that Padre Pio would see the great miracle. And then all of a sudden, Padre Pio died. It just presented a problem. Um, but one of Padre Pio's associates, uh, Father Sanamo, told Conchita that he hadn't believed in the Garabandal apparitions until Padre Pio asked him to give the cloth that would cover his face after death to Conchita. When he gave Conchita the cloth and the letter, she asked, why did the Blessed Virgin tell me that Padre Pio would see the miracle if he has died? And Father Sanamo responded, he saw the miracle before he died. He told me himself. So Padre Pio did see the miracle. Um, it did authenticate that you know, particular message. Uh, very, very powerful. So um, now for me, the, the other connection here, um, Conchita's visit to Padre Pio. In February of 1967, Conchita arrived in Rome with her mother, a Spanish priest, Father Luis Luna, Professor Enrico Midi, and Princess Cecilia from Bourbon Palma. Uh, she had been called by Cardinal Ottaviani, prefect for the Holy Office, which is today known as the Sacred Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. It was during this visit that Conchita had a private audience with Pope Paul VI, during which only five others were present. Now, when I saw the name Princess Cecilia from Bourbon Palmer, for me, that was another aha moment. So if you could show the next slide, um, Dave. Okay. Uh, what we see here, of course, the, the, the fat guy is me. Uh, the woman in the middle is the Princess of Italy. Uh, she, she, her family was the royal uh, family of, of Italy. Uh, her husband, she's married to the Prince of Romania, who is Maurice of Bourbon Palma. So when I saw the name 
of the woman who accompanied Conchita, I, I had that connection um, with, with the prince. The reason I met the prince and the princess is because her father, if you go to the next slide, um, Dave, please, is the individual in the middle, King Umberto, the King of Italy. It was the King of Italy, um, the princess, the royal family owned the Holy Shroud. Now it was revealed in Garabandal where the Blessed Mother told Conchita, this is the imprint of my divine son or another translation, this is the divine imprint of my son. Um, so for me, I had that connection, the shroud, uh, Princess Cecilia, King Umberto, I met Princess Maria Pia of Bourbon Palma. Um, to the king's right, to our left, you see Mama Gili. She's the one who originally brought the bleeding image to the United States in 1953, the image that we're gonna venerate on screen here. To the right, to our right, to the king's left, is Father Dante Di Girolamo. He was the president of the Society of the Holy Face just prior to me. He's the one that handed me the miraculous image, uh, which we are going to venerate here tonight. And I'm gonna explain more about veneration later, but there's gonna be a very real event we have to continue because we, we really do have a lot to unpack, but this is this was another connection. Um, so uh, let's go to the next slide, Dave, please. Okay, so here we're gonna look at ecstasy. Um, these are the girls actually in ecstasy. Now each girl, you know, you you each one could look in a different direction, but see the, the same apparition. Go to the next slide, Dave. Okay, so they would, if you remember that rocky terrain, they would fall onto this rocky terrain. Now they would be in their homes um, and they would get a series of calls, three calls. Now they could be in different homes, different locations in their own home, but these callings would come at the same time. Each girl would have this feeling, okay, inside that the Blessed Mother was about to appear. It's a, it's a little bit of excitement. Then there would be a second calling. And then on the third calling, each one of them would run out of their homes no matter where they were in the town and meet at the place of the visitation at the same time. And they would fly over those rocks that you saw. Then when the Blessed Mother would appear, they would boom, slam down on their knees on those rocks and their heads would jerk back um, in, the, in this position. Now the girls themselves, uh, they were pricked with pins. Um, sand was poured into Conchita's eyes. There was one event where um, hailstones were hitting the eyeballs of Conchita while they were open. Uh, no reaction. Okay. Two men on each side of the visionaries or any one of the girls could not lift them. You could not turn their heads. You couldn't budge them. And yet each girl could lift each other up. If you go to the next slide, Dave. Okay, so we see one of the girls lifting the other girl up to kiss the Blessed Mother, for the Blessed Mother to kiss the rosary. Um, two men couldn't lift one girl, and we see one girl very easily holding the other girl up to kiss the Blessed Mother. Now, they would have ecstatic marches, we call ecstatic marches, and ecstatic falls. Um, you go to the next slide, Dave. Here we see, uh, I think it was Mary Lowley, with, um, she would slam, they would slam backwards with the head crashing onto the rocks and then they would levitate. Um, so this phenomenon started taking place over here. Now, Again, all of these events, very, Garamandel was very, very unique, okay, when it came to ecstasies. There's been other visionaries in ecstasy, nothing like this, N nothing with going through something like this. But this is not proof of the supernatural. No matter what we just discussed here, this is not proof of supernatural, but there are other things that lead to it. What's happening here, we do see phenomenon like this, levitation, extra normal strength um, in cases of possession. 
Okay. So uh, the devil can cause uh, uh, ecstasy. Uh, even with stigmata, the devil can cause stigmata. He can cause the scratches on the body. He could cause well, everything that we see here. All right? But there's a few things he cannot do that did take place during these ecstasies. If you go to the next slide, Dave, you see the visionary holding a crucifix. Right? Um, this is what, when somebody's possessed, what they can't do. Even a, even a crucifix that's not blessed, they cannot hold and they cannot place on their body because it reminds them of that which defeated them, the passion of Jesus. So these girls would consistently hold the rosary, pray the rosary, kiss the crucifix, kiss the rosary, hand the crucifix out to others to kiss, hold the crucifix towards a cemetery, through the gates, to pray for the souls of, in purgatory, for the souls of the dead, holding the crucifix out consistently. So somebody that's possessed, if this was diabolical, they could not hold that crucifix. And that's what they did. They never let go of the crucifix, the rosary. Now the devil hates the blessed mother. He hates the blessed mother. He could never hold a rosary. He could never pray the rosary. He could never kiss the rosary. And these were events that lead to the authenticity of these particular ecstasies. Can you go to the uh, next slide, Dave? Okay, well, this image is what we see behind me. Um, this is the uh, actually, one event, the girls went into ecstasy, Jacinta did not. And she was wondering, you know, why didn't she fall into ecstasy along with the other girls? As soon as she thought that, boom, she slams down into ecstasy. But she sees the sacred heart of Jesus, while the other girls were seeing the Blessed Mother. This is the spot where she saw the sacred heart of Jesus. Now, when I saw this image, oh, I was very familiar with this particular image. So again, for me, you know, the connection there, what this, what this actually reveals. But I did not know why, if it's a sacred heart grotto, why is there a holy face um, in that grotto? So if we look, if we look at the image close up, I don't know if I have the Mexico image. Can you go to the next slide, Dave? Uh, the one after that. Okay, what you see on the left is the image that's at Garabandal. The one on the right is the Holy Shroud. Okay. Uh, immediately, now I superimpose them. I didn't do it here for us here, but when you do this, all right, you see the first striking when I saw that grotto, which is behind me actually, that first grotto, when I saw that Holy Face image, the first thing, for me, and I'm going to point it out to everyone here, the deep, dark, elongated eye sockets like we see on the shroud. This was known as the holy face of Mexico. I was familiar with this image from childhood. This was my mom's favorite holy face image, um, but very revealing. This went missing when I was like, I don't know, 10 years old. And, and of course, my mother thought I took it, you know, but, but I didn't. <laughs> but it went missing. But that was her favorite holy face picture. Uh, when I was about 40, I used to go on private pilgrimage. Mama Geely died in the 80s. That's the woman I showed you before with King Umberto, the one who had the bleeding image that, that I have. And um, I'm on private pilgrimage in that house one time. And I look in another room and I see that holy face of Mexico. Now the tradition as I remember that particular image is that a priest had his church refurbished in Mexico. Then he took pictures after it was completed. He took a picture of the new tabernacle, but that face came out in place of the tabernacle. You know, I'm very careful when I hear these things, you know, and, um, but that's the tradition as I remember it. Now, that image, my mother's favorite holy face image goes missing when I'm 10 years old. And of course, yeah, I got the blame. But it wasn't me. I said, Mom, no, I, I didn't. 
I didn't take it. Now, 40, when I'm about 40, I'm on a private pilgrimage going back to Mama's house in, in uh, East Orange, New Jersey, which is now a convent. Nuns live there, the Blessed Sacraments there. Um, but at that time, there was a caretaker. And I'm sitting in the living room, and I look in the other room, and I see that image. And I said, where did you get my, she looked at me, she said, Don, are you okay? Because I went, whoa. And she says, Don, where did you get, I said to, to her, where did you get my mom's picture? And the caretaker said, well, Don, that's not your mother's picture. That's Mama Geely's picture. And it's Mama Geely's favorite holy face picture. But I know she loved you and I saw your reaction. Would you like it? Would you like to have it? Of course I said, yes. I raced home from New Jersey, Pico Pig, Long Island, ran into my mother's house. And very lovingly, I said, Ma, look what I have. And very lovingly, she looked at me and said, it's about time you brought my picture back. I says, no, Mom, this isn't yours. This was Mama Geely's. But I'm going to make a copy and I'm, I'm going to give it to you. So in fact, when my mother died, we buried a copy of this image in with my mother. But to show you how God works, my life has been the shroud, the passion of Jesus, um, and the holy face, studying since youth. When I saw this image, when I reintroduced into my life, immediately I saw the eye sockets, and I knew what I was looking at. I'm looking at the face on the shroud, the long, the elongated, narrow nose, the, the narrowness of the cheeks, the wisps of hair. Now, also looking at this image, you'll see a white line coming down on Jesus's right side of his forehead. That lines up with the blood flow on the shroud image that we see there. It's very hard to see, but on the other side, there's a group of thorns that coincides with the puncture wounds on the other uh, side of the head of Jesus, on his left side, our right. I knew what I was looking at. And if you look very close, okay, um, you're going to see they they pierced Jesus's lower lip with a thorn. You can see a large thorn piercing his lower lip. So he could not speak properly from the cross. Also looking at the chin of Jesus, there were many thorns in the chin of Jesus. And I immediately recall the Orthodox tradition that they tied Jesus's head to his cross with a thorn bush. Okay, now around the chin, and over the right side of the head, a thorn actually pierced the eyeball. And then there's a tradition that many people have heard of this, but they thought it was from the crown of thorns. It was not. It was from his head being tied with this thorn bush. And a thorn pierced his right eye. The, the eyelid is actually ripped in half, deeply embedded, and he, I, he couldn't pull it out. We really can't imagine a lot of what, what Jesus went through, what he endured. Can you go to the next slide, Dave? Now, this is the, excuse me, the cloth that uh, my image was wrapped in when it was first given to Mama Gili in Italy in 1953. I don't have time to get into the whole story, but it, maybe after the presentation, we can continue with a little uh, um, segment. This bled in 1950. Uh, in the year 2000, it was studied. The blood type was determined to be blood type AB, which is the same blood type that's found on the Holy Shroud and the same blood type that's found on the Holy Sudarium. I was thrilled when, when I received the test, uh, the, the results of the test, because I knew the blood type on the Shroud and I knew the blood type on the Holy Sudarium. Um, so we had that holy face connection, for me anyway, with, with Garbangal. It's there. It's, you see the grotto behind me. It's, it's there. What it shows is reveals a lot of the passion of what Jesus endured, which is very important with Garmin Dome. Um, this is actually a corporal. This is what wrapped the image that was, was uh, given to me originally. If you go to the next slide, Dave, I actually open up the corporal. I present it to people now different. I bring it in its original wrappings, which is full of blood. You can see all the blood stains. That's from the image. Um, so the image itself, the image itself is, is uh, 
It's not a picture. It's the cover of a book. Uh, the book itself was uh, about the passion of Jesus. The Concetta the, the Pantusa, if you want to take notes, uh, C-O-N-C-E-T-T-A, Pantusa, P-A-N-T-U-S-A. Courses open for her sainthood. She was a stigmatist, a mystic. And um, she owned this picture in Italy when it bled in 1950. She died in March of 1950. Mama Gili, the woman that you saw with Conchita, um, with uh, the King, King Umberto, went to Italy on a return trip to her home, which was at this particular where this church was, that this image was kept. A monk saw Mama sitting in the church and he said to Mama Gili, he says, come to the sacristy, I have something to show you. So she followed him, he opened a drawer and it was this corporal, okay, full of blood. He opened the corporal, just like we see here. And she saw the bleeding image. And he said, you to take it, take this image to the United States, promote the devotion to the holy face of Jesus. And God has many graces to give to those who will venerate this image. Now, we're going to do this today. We're going to venerate this image. Um, but before we do, you can go to that next slide, Dave. Okay, this is, this is the cover of the book. Up on the top, you see Giuseppe Henri. He was the photographer um, he, and the author of this book. And Alessante Sandoni is Italian for the Holy Shroud. And then as revealed in the photograph. Um, so the next slide, Dave. That's, uh, that's number 20. That's the, the, the final Oh, that's one. the last one. All right, let's leave it there then. Okay, that's fine. Because um, it's very hard for me to see because I, I keep getting these pop-ups on how many people so how many people are coming in and leaving. Okay, so, um, so anyway, we're going to start unpacking. It, it was a couple of messages and events that, that have to take place. And uh, there was, we call a night of screams when the girls and the Blessed Mother showed the girls the great punishment, you know, that uh, would be coming to the world. Now, Mary Lowley describes it and she says, although we continued to see the Blessed Mother, we saw a great multitude of people who suffered greatly and screamed in anguish. The Virgin explained to us how this great punishment would come because there would, there would come a moment, a time in the church would seem to perish. Now, we actually encountered this during COVID, where the church really, you couldn't receive the sacraments, you couldn't go to church. It seemed like a parish, as if it were finished or disappearing. The church would suffer a great trial. We asked the Virgin how this great punishment would be called, and she said it would be called communism. Now, our own faith teaches us in the catechism. You can look this up, paragraph 675. Before Christ's second coming, the church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. The persecution that accompanies her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of a religious deception offering men an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from the truth. The supreme religious deception is that of the Antichrist, a pseudo-messianism by which man glorifies himself in place of God and of his Messiah come in the flesh. So the church itself, our own faith, teaches us, tells us we're going to go through this, you know, this period, this, this trial of, of apostasy from the truth. And, and it, this is really pointing also to communism and, and actually we're experiencing something, I'm not gonna to get too much into it, but there is something going on in the church and it's causing a lot of confusion. Um, so this all gives credence to that um, message the, the, um, uh, that Mary Lowley was describing. And um, there will also be a warning. So, now, Conchita, the way she explains it is in the sky, it's, it's like, now you have to imagine, this is a little 12-year-old girl at this time saying that it was like two stars colliding um, and, you know, uh, but nobody will be hurt, right? 
and time will come to a standstill. Everything will come to a standstill. And our sins, we will see the state of our souls as God sees them. Okay. So we will see the sins we commit and what which ones we omit where, where we have not uh, um, done good. So I tell people not to get too fearful or wrapped up in this. We do have something to look at on what this might be like. Okay. And actually, that was Fatima. Now, if you ask, you know, people about that great sun miracle, I, I ask people, if, you know, would you would like to have been there to witness that miracle? And, and you know, everybody says, yeah, yeah, wow, what a miracle. That was great. So I'm going to read a couple of uh, uh, eyewitness testimonies from individuals who were at that great event. Uh, there was a doctor, Amelia Garrett, professor of natural sciences of Coimbra University, describes it as follows. The sun's disk did not remain immobile. This was not the sparkling of a heavenly body, for it spun round on itself in a mad whirl, when suddenly a clamor was heard from all the people. The sun whirling seemed to loosen itself from the firmament and advance threatening it threateningly upon the earth as if to crush us with its huge fiery weight. The sensation during those moments was terrible. Another witness, Mr. Albano Barros, a successful building contractor from Somerville, New Jersey. He was from a village about eight miles outside of that. He was 12 years old at the time. He remembers the miracle. Uh, and he says, he quotes, I was watching sheep as was my daily task. And suddenly there in the direction of Fatima, I saw the sun fall from the sky. I thought it was the end of the world. Uh, so this shows you the, the fear. Other witnesses, uh, it turned uh, Maria Carrera. It turned everything different colors, yellow, blue, white, and it shook and trembled. It seemed like a wheel of fire, which was going to fall on the people. They cried out, we shall all be killed. We shall all be killed. Others called on Our Lady to save them and recited the acts of contrition. One woman began to confess her sins aloud, saying that she had done this and done that. And then at last the sun, sun stopped moving and we returned. But it shows you we have something to look at. Now this event only had a radius of approximately 1200 miles. This we can look at as a warning of Garabandal, except it's going to be on a worldwide scale. Um, so let's not tempt heaven. We have something to look at. So yes, it was fearful. The, believe me, these people saw the state of their souls as if they were standing before God now and started confessing their sins right there in the mud in Fatima, but a radius of 1,200 miles. So it's an event that did take place. So um, we have something to look at regarding, you know, the, the warning of uh, Garabandal. We're going to unpack the um, messages uh, of uh, Garabandal. Now, maybe later, we're not going to have time to get into the, to some of the prophecies that might be fulfilled, the, the Pope visiting Russia, and there's a couple of other things. But I want to unpack the messages uh, first. Uh, Don? Uh, the Blessed Don. Mother's first message was October 18, 1961. Don. She said to the children, many sacrifices must be made. Yes. Much penance must be done. We must pay many visits to the Blessed Sacrament. But first of all, we must be very good. We must lead good lives. Already the cup is filling. And if we do not change, we shall all be punished. Thank you. A great chastisement will come. Um, in uh, in uh, June 18th of 1965, the Blessed Mother appeared between the years of 1961 and 1965. And she said, since my message of October 18th, 1961 has not been complied with and has not been made known much to the world, I will tell you this is the last one. Okay. Um, now, the warning was given. This was the last one to be given to the world. And before the chalice was filling, now it is overflowing. Many cardinals, many bishops, and many priests are on the road to perdition, and they are taking many souls with them. And I just want to unpack that a little bit. 
many priests, cardinals, and bishops are on the road to perdition. This, you, you can understand uh, back in the 60s, it, you know, it coincided with Vatican II, and I'm not gonna get into synods and, and councils. That was another locution, um, but, but many bishops, priests, and cardinals are on the, on the road to perdition and taking many souls with them. They didn't have the understanding at that time what this was about. Uh, we can look back now, and, and I myself, uh, uh, to let you know uh, that the priest, one of the priests who wrote a song about Garamondel, he's very devoted to Garamondel, sexually abused me. Um, I'm not going to give names or the order that he was from. It serves no purpose. And, and, and to, uh, he still has family members alive. And, and I will not mention names. But that's an event that took place. So I understood what this message was. Conchita and I have a friend. Uh, um, again, different priest. This priest, uh, Conchita, attended his ordination, very devoted to Garamondel, but caused a very great scandal. Uh, and then he was found dead. But um, but when, when you hear, and, and this is important to understand, they are on the road to perdition. It, Blessed Mother's not saying they're content, but they're on that path. Okay. You see, at any time, God could give them the grace and they can, they can turn. And this is where we come into play. You know, when, when we respond to the Blessed Mother's message, and we're going to see as we continue with this message. But this is important, people. It's important to understand the Blessed Mother did not say these souls are going to hell, but they're on that road. Okay? And, of course, we could look at, look at the scandal and, and uh, understand what this was about. And you can understand that at the time, the bishops at that time, especially in Garvindale, would look at this message and say, what? what? What are they talking about? I'm not gonna go to hell. They thought they were talking about them. The, the scandal didn't erupt at this time. They had no clue. All they know is there's a message here, the Blessed Mother saying many cardinals, bishops, and priests are on the road to petition. So a bishop looking at this message, would be very disturbed, and I can understand that, you know. But sometimes we have to look in hindsight, you know. And and again, there's some events that has happened to priests that Kikita and I personally know, and and um, yeah, it was it was a terrible terrible thing, but um, but doesn't mean they're condemned, and and that's important. Uh, um, to the Eucharist, there is given less and less importance. And of course, we, we see that. You, we don't have blinders on. We should avoid the wrath of God on us by our good efforts. If you ask pardon with your sincere soul, God will pardon you. It is I, your mother, who through the intercession of St. Michael, wish to say that you amend, you amend your lives, that you're already in the last warnings, and that I love you very much, and I don't want your condemnation. Ask us sincerely, and we will give to you. You should sacrifice more. This next sentence for me uh, sealed the authenticity of this. Because this is one, one sentence the devil cannot tell you to do. And I always kept this in my mind. The very last sentence of the very last message that our Blessed Mother gave to the girls, she said, think about the passion of Jesus. You see, the devil can't tell you to do that because that's what defeated him. He can't tell you, contemplate the passion of Jesus. Garabandel was very Eucharistic centered. In fact, that was the great miracle. I don't have time to get into that. but. Um, these messages, and again, we have to be careful. Now, also with the chastisement, if, if man does not change, okay, it'll be a great chastisement. Uh, there, there's a little bit of, um, I'm not gonna get into what it's gonna be like, but not to focus on that. People, not to focus on, on the chastisement. Sometimes if we endure a warning, we endure a great miracle, a great miracle, I didn't get into that, a great miracle is gonna take place in Garabandel. 
will know it's from God. Everyone will know it's from God. And then there'll be an optional chastisement, an optional punishment, okay? Uh, now, what's important is not to focus on this. You know, sometimes we, we listen to messages and it's, you know, we get excited, you know, and we're, we're focusing on messages. Garabindel leads us to the passion of Jesus. Garabindel tells us to do something. I'm not gonna stand here or sit here in this interview, tell you what the messages are and then leave you, okay? It has to lead somewhere. And quite frankly, it does. It leads to the passion of Jesus. The holy face that you see behind me reveals much more about the passion of Jesus. So if you ever get to Garabindel and you see this image, think about the thorns and, and everything else that we discussed, but why we don't focus on chastisements? Okay, we have an example we can look at in the Bible, okay? You're familiar with the story of Jonah and the big fish when God said to Jonah, and I love when the responses are Jonah, Ready, Lord, David, Solomon. Ready, Lord, Abraham. Ready, Lord. <laughs> yeah, are you ready? Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and tell the people there they have to repent or I'm going to destroy their city. Jonah didn't want to go. Of course, we know that story. But most people don't read past, you know, um, that he approached the king and, and the, the, the king, convert, you know, put sackcloth and ash and they repented and... and uh, and Jonah, what did Jonah do? Jonah left the city. He went into the desert. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. He waited to see the chastisement. Then the Lord provided a leafy plant to grow over him that, that provided um, shade, you know, from the sun and to give him comfort. So then, and Jonah was happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm that which chewed the plant up and it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head and he grew faint. He wanted to die. And he said, it would be better for me to die than live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said, I, and I am so angry. I wish I were dead. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left hand? So people, what, what we gather from this is if we focus on chastisements, we give a message, we sit back and we wait for the chastisement, we're the ones that might be punished. Because, because we're not confident that people can change. We have to do the work. We have to do fasting and penance for ourselves. No, Gary Mendel is calling us to do for the world, to fast, penance. Now penance, we are during Lent, not necessarily severe. People are called the different types of penances. And I advise people that, you know, if you have four sugars in your coffee every morning, maybe one day you have three. Offer it up. Anything you do, offer it up as a penance, you know. It could be as simple as that. But let's not focus. Let's not focus on chastisements. Because if we sit around and we wait for God to destroy whatever, we are the ones that are going to be punished, right? So that's important. You know, that's, we have to get beyond, not not to stay with the message, but now God, you know, Mother Mary, what do you want us to do? Contemplate the passion of my son. Now, my brothers and sisters, we did that. We have to wrap this up, but before we do, uh, I'm gonna ask if uh, Dave, if you could put the image of the, the bleeding image, I forgot what slide that was. Okay. This is the miraculous image. What I'm going to do it at, at this time. Now, first of all, if you have questions, hang around, you, you know, because the prayers we're going to pray next are very important. It's, it's all part of, I mean, I didn't get into too much of the passion, why, how it's connected with the divine mercy. Everything begins and ends with the passion. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us. Garamandel tells us, contemplate the passion. This is what we do. So what we're going to do here, and I'm going to invite everyone to actually touch your camera, 
touch the face of Jesus, we're going to make an act of reparation, not just a prayer, but an act. It's our turn to console our God. Listen to this message. Contemplate the passion. What can we do? Even if we think about the passion, what we're going to do, take your hand, put it to your phone and touch this image and say, I soothe your wounds, Jesus, from your passion. I wipe your sweat and blood. My brothers and sisters, that event will take place. And this is official Catholic Church teaching. When you venerate this image, it passes through and touches the person whose image this is. You will touch the face of Jesus. You will console our God in his passion. This is what Garvindale calls us to do. And you will receive a grace today. Graces is not always felt. You might receive a physical healing. And by the way, if anybody does feel they receive a grace, please write a testimony. Get it to Dave and Joan. They can get it to me. It's very important to show the fruits. Um, so I invite us now, please touch the face of Jesus in a spirit of reparation. Ask Jesus to forgive the sins of the world and our sins and wipe his face. And with that, I thank you, my brothers and sisters. I didn't give you my phone number. Maybe Dave and Joan can, can post. I tried to stay at the five o'clock hour. It's very difficult to do because there is a lot. Um, and I don't want to... I don't want to lose that feeling of compunction when we approach the face of Jesus. Thank you, Dave and John. Thank you, Don. We're just, we're struck with silence at the moment. Bring your petitions with you when, when you touch the face. You can't overburden Jesus with prayer, with families, uh, maybe who have left the faith and we're praying for them to come back, people, conversion of sinners, and whatever God has in mind for anybody. But we are being brought to a closer relationship with Jesus through what we heard today, through his passion. Well, thank you, Don. <laughs> Very moving and uh, powerful. Uh, you're welcome. We'll, uh, we're so blessed because he is, he is here with us in, in the sacraments of our church and um, particularly in the Most Holy Eucharist. And his grace flows from every image uh, that we venerate and it's all about venerating this is what he said i want you to venerate my image and and uh wow i'm amazed uh, you know, even on uh, the computer you know how powerful that is but let us go now to uh vilnius where he's waiting for us he is there it's just after midnight and we're going to join him and pray for our world the, the way that he himself he himself said to do this and i'm sure we are giving him honor and glory and praise uh, by responding to the message that he sent us through Sister Faustina, through St. Faustina. And yes, he told St. Maria Faustina, you please me most when you meditate on my passion. So we are going to console him. We're going to make acts of reparation. And today, since it's Sunday during Lent, we will be praying um, with Our Lady, the Most Holy Rosary. And we'll be doing the sorrowful mysteries so uh, your talk, Don, just leads beautifully into this holy hour prayer. So as we go to Vilnius, we'll take a moment of silence and prepare our hearts. Again, as Don was saying, over, over the internet, through our computer screens, our, our iPad screens, phone screens, to be in the presence of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Okay, Brother Lauren, lead us in the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. And if you came in a little late, I explained earlier that we make the spiritual communion prayer, first of all, to unite ourselves with the Lord here since we're visiting him across the airwaves and the internet. But St. Faustina was asked to receive Holy Communion for nine days on behalf of her country. And um, so we make this act of spiritual communion in lieu of that at this particular time. But if you can ever do that, if you try to do it, whenever you receive Holy Communion, be sure to be knighted with, with the Lord. This is the chapel in Vilnius, Lithuania. St. Faustina was stationed in Vilnius when uh, the painting was done. Uh, her spiritual director, Blessed Father Michael Sapochko, commissioned the painting in 1934. And the bishop there has set up this Divine Mercy shrine with uh, our Lord present in the Most Holy Eucharist on the altar and the original painting, not a print, the original painting on the wall there above the tabernacle. And so, Jesus, we love you and we praise you. We ask you to bless us, bless our families. We bring before you, Jesus, all of the prayer petitions in the hearts of those gathered here. And dear Blessed Mother, Holy Mother of God, Immaculate Virgin, we ask you to gather up these petitions, take them to your Son as he hangs on the cross, giving his, giving his all, taking his last breath and to intercede for us for these intentions and for everything that our world needs at this time. We talked about Our Lady had said at Fatima, you know, to pray for the conversion of Russia and to pray the Holy Rosary every day and... Um, so we are joined together here today to pray this Holy Rosary, to squash all the evil in the world. Pray for the triumph of her Immaculate Heart, which will come. And so we'll begin, Dave and I will begin, and then Don's going to lead each decade. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy in Spirit, the Holy, Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Catholic Holy. Church. The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. And for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For an increase in faith, hope, and charity. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Okay, Don. The first of the Sapha mysteries is the agony in the garden. In the garden, Jesus encountered a endured a blood sweat. There's a medical, medical term called hematidrosis, where the blood capillaries mix with the blood and produces a blood sweat. But it takes extreme emotional stress and anxiety to cause this condition. What's unique is that we find this condition that Jesus endured only in one gospel, and that's in Luke's gospel. And Luke is a physician. So it's a doctor that's telling us about this condition Jesus endured in the agony. The, what he's trying to get across to us is the extent, the extent of the anxiety, knowing that he was going to be crucified. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray <clears throat> for sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, 
especially those in most in divine mercy. The second of the sorrowful mysteries is the scourging at the pillar. The scourging at the pillar, Jesus was bent over to a whipping post, received over 300 scourge marks and was whipped with a lictor's rod, which would welt up the flesh, break the capillaries, prepare it for gouging with a Roman flagrum. There was not a sound spot, according to the shroud, not a sound spot left on the body of Jesus. Jesus endured all of this, but more than the physical. Jesus was scourged, according to the shroud, Jesus was scourged, bent over to a whipping post in the nude, just to imagine the humiliation, the embarrassment, and the physical pain. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The third of the south of mysteries is the crowning of thorns. The shroud reveals Jesus had between 50 and 75 puncture wounds around the whole scalp of his head. The crown of thorns was not a ringlet like we're used to seeing depicted in art. It was actually a whole cap of crowns. These thorns were so large, you could not put your hand on them to push it into a scalp. They used sticks. The thorns would penetrate the skin, hit the bone of the skull, and twist and bend and work its way between the flesh and the bone. The pain that, this, that Jesus endured during this event, we cannot fathom it. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth of the sovereign mysteries is the carrying of the cross. In the carrying of the cross, we see revealed in the shroud, Jesus fell a number of times and received huge splinters in the back of his neck that he could not pull out. He embedded very deeply into his back and the back of his neck. The falling, the cross piece he carried weighed 110 to 120 pounds. He fell, slammed his left knee into the pavement, and then down he went, smacking his face on the pavement, and the cross piece followed and hit him on the back of the head. Uh, these falls were brutal. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Mm. As it was, as it in, the was in the beginning, is now. And never shall be, world without end. Never shall be, world without end. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fifth of the sorrowful mysteries is the crucifixion of Jesus. The shroud reveals that Jesus received the nails through his wrist. The nails would hit the median nerve, we can't imagine the sensation um, that this, this caused Jesus, the pain, the unbearable pain. He was lifted up on his upright and then his feet were nailed to the cross. No footrest. All his weight hanging on these nails. He would sag down, pull himself up. The best way to describe what Jesus had done on the cross would be his, his uh body would shake uncontrollably, convulse uncontrollably because of the nails on the nerves. It was being like nailed to a cross, shivering uncontrollably with rigor mortis. And then when he finally decided on his own, at three o'clock, the hour of great mercy, Jesus gave up his spirit. I was gonna ask before we continue, just to contemplate one moment this event and to ask, to say to Jesus, thank you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us, forgive our, us sins. our sins. Save, Save us from the fires of hell. And lead lead all souls, souls to heaven, to heaven. Especially, especially those, those in most need of thy mercy. Thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the most blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O most sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Dave, you already prayed for the Holy Father. Uh, yes, yes. We usually do the, the Our Father, Hail Mary and Glory Be for his intentions at this time. Right, and I thought you did that at the beginning. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for, for us sinners, now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in, in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, and, and ever shall be, world, world without, without end. Amen. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be our be protection, protection against the, the wickedness, the wickedness and the snares of the, of the devil. May God rebuke you. We, we, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the wicked spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll wrap up this rosary with the prayer to St. Joseph, this month of St. Joseph. To you, O oh blessed Joseph, do we come in our tribulation. And having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also. Through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and through the paternal love with which you embrace the child Jesus, we humbly beg your graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood. And with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities, O oh, most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ. O oh, most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. 
O oh, our most mighty protector, be kind to us and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. As once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield to each one of us by your constant protection, so that supported by your example and by your aid, we may be able to live piously, to die in holiness, and to obtain eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rose. Okay. Lord. Now we... As for the intercession of all the holy saints in heaven, and Don, I'm going. I'll go ahead and mute you. So next time you need the microphone, you'll have to unmute. Okay. She said earlier, Jesus told Saint Faustina to make a novena for her country by the recitation of the litany of the saints, and she wrote in her diary, diary number sixty. She said, "I began." the novena that very evening towards the end of the litany i saw a great radiance and in the midst of it god the father between this radiance and the earth i saw jesus nailed to the cross in such a way that when god wanted to look at the earth he had to look through the wounds of jesus and i understood that it was for the sake of jesus that god blesses the earth and after hearing dawn's explanation of how brutal the crucifixion was we can understand why god blesses the earth after what his son endured for us we thank you jesus in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. lord have mercy on us lord have mercy on us christ have mercy on us christ have mercy on us lord have mercy on us lord have mercy on us christ hear us christ graciously hear us god the father of heaven have mercy on us god the son redeemer of the world have mercy on us god the the holy spirit have mercy on us holy trinity one god have mercy on us Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Raphael, pray for us. All you holy angels and archangels, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. All you holy patriarchs and prophets, pray for us. Saint Peter, Pray for us. Saint Paul. Pray for us. Saint Andrew. Pray for us. Saint James. Pray for us. Saint John. Pray for us. Saint Thomas. Pray for us. Saint James. Pray for us. Saint Philip. Pray for us. Saint Bartholomew. Pray for us. Saint Matthew. Pray for us. Saint Simon. Pray for us. Saint Jude. Pray for us. Saint Matthias. Pray for us. Saint Barnabas. Pray for us. Saint Luke. Pray for us. Saint Mark. Pray for us. All you holy apostles and evangelists. Pray for us. All you holy disciples of the Lord. Pray for us. All you holy innocents. Pray for us. Saint Stephen. Pray for us. Saint Lawrence. Pray for us. Saint Vincent. Pray for us. Saints Fabian and Sebastian. Pray for us. Saints John and Paul. Pray for us. Saints Cosmos and Damian. Pray for us. All you holy martyrs. Pray for us. Saint Sylvester. Pray for us. Saint Gregory. Pray for us. Saint Ambrose. Pray for us. Saint Augustine. Pray for us. Saint Jerome. Pray for us. Saint Martin. Pray for us. Saint Nicholas. Pray for us. All you holy bishops and confessors. Pray for us. All you holy doctors. Pray for us. Saint Anthony. Pray for us. Saint Benedict. Pray for us. Saint Bernard. Pray for us. Saint Dominic. Pray for us. Saint Francis. Pray for us. Saint Pio. Pray for us. All you holy priests and Levites. Pray for us. All you holy monks and hermits. Pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us. Saint Agatha. 
pray for us. Saint Lucy, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Cecilia, pray for us. Saint Anastasia, pray for us. Saint Catherine, pray for us. Saint Claire, pray for us. Saint Elizabeth, pray for us. Saint Faustina, pray for us. All you holy virgins and widows, pray for us. All you holy saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, save your people. From all evil. Lord, save your people. From all sin. Lord, save your people. From your wrath. Lord, save your people. From a sudden and unprovided death. Lord, save your people. From the snares of the devil. Lord, save your people. From anger hatred and all ill will lord save your people from the spirit of uncleanness lord save your people from lightning and tempest lord save your people from the scourge of earthquake lord save your people from plague famine and war lord save your people from everlasting death lord save your people by the mystery of your holy incarnation. Lord, save your people. By your coming. Lord, save your people. By your birth. Lord, save your people. By your baptism and holy fasting. Lord, save your people. By your cross and passion. Lord, save your people. By your death and burial. Lord, save your people. By your holy resurrection, Lord, save your people. By your wonderful ascension, Lord, save your people. By the coming of the Holy Spirit, Lord, save your people. On the day of judgment, Lord, save your people. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, hear our prayer. That you will spare us, Lord, hear our prayer that you will pardon us. Lord, hear our prayer. That it may please you to bring us to true penance. Lord, hear our prayer. Guide and protect your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Preserve in holy religion the Pope and all those in holy orders. Lord, hear our prayer. Humble the enemies of holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Give peace and unity to the whole Christian people. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring back to the unity of the church all those who are straying and bring all unbelievers to the light of the gospel. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen and preserve us in your holy service. Lord, hear our prayer. Raise our minds to desire the things of heaven. Lord, hear our prayer. Reward all our benefactors with eternal blessings. Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver our souls from eternal damnation and the souls of our brethren, relatives, and benefactors. Lord, hear our prayer. Give and preserve the fruits of the earth. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant eternal rest to all the faithful departed. Lord, hear our prayer. That it may please you to hear and heed us, Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> The Prayer of St. Gertrude the Great. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the Masses said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home, and within my own family. Amen. All right, Mary. Now we pray the chaplet of divine mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This is the fifth day. Today, bring to me the souls of those who have separated themselves from my church and immerse them in the ocean of my mercy. During my bitter passion, they tore at my body and heart. That is my church. As they return to unity with the church, my wounds heal, and in this way they alleviate my passion. Most merciful Jesus, goodness itself, you do not refuse light to those who seek it of you. Receive into the abode of your most compassionate heart the souls of those who have separated themselves from your church. Draw them by your light into the unity of the church and do not let them escape from the abode of your most compassionate heart, but bring it about that they too come to glorify the generosity of your mercy. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon the souls of those who have separated themselves from your son's church who have squandered your blessings and misused your graces by obstinately persisting in their errors. Do not look upon their errors, but upon the love of your own son and upon his bitter passion, which he underwent for their sake, since they too are enclosed in his most compassionate heart. Bring it about that they also may glorify your great mercy for endless ages. Amen. You've expired, Jesus, and the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O oh, fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O oh, blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O oh, blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O oh, blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Okay, Eternal now. Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Go ahead and finish it, Don. Uh, Holy God. Holy God. Oh, Holy God, Holy One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The option of closing prayer, eternal God, in, in whom, whom mercy is endless, endless and, and the, the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus. Okay, our Lady of America prayer for our country. O oh, Immaculate Mother, Queen of our country, open our hearts, our homes, and our land to the coming of Jesus, your divine Son. With him, reign over us, O oh, Heavenly Lady, so pure and so bright with the radiance of God's light shining in and about you. Be our leader against the powers of evil set upon wrestling the world of souls, redeemed at such a great cost by the sufferings of your son and of yourself. In union with him, from that same savior who loves us with infinite charity we gather about you O oh chaste and holy mother virgin immaculate patron patroness of our beloved land determined to fight under your banner of holy purity against the wickedness that would make all the world an abyss of evil 
without God and without your loving maternal care. We consecrate our hearts, our homes, our land to your most pure heart, O oh, great queen, that the kingdom of your son, our redeemer and our God may be firmly established in us. We ask no special sign of you, sweet mother, for we believe in your great love for us and we place in you our entire confidence. We promise to honor you by faith, love, and the purity of our lives according to your desire. Reign over us then, O Virgin Immaculate, with your Son, Jesus Christ. May his divine heart and your most chaste heart be ever enthroned and glorified among us. Use us, your children of America, as your instruments of peace among men and nations. Work your miracle of grace in us so that we may be a glory to the blessed Trinity who created, redeemed, and sanctifies us. May your valiant spouse, Saint Joseph, with the holy angels and saints, assist you and us in renewing the face of the earth. Then, when our work is over, come, holy immaculate mother, and as our victorious queen, lead us to the eternal kingdom where your son reigns forever as king. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lord. So we'll leave Vilnius now. We'll sing the Tantamergo, and uh, then we'll come back and visit with Don for a few more minutes. Open it up for questions. So Dave and I'll sing. Tantamergo, no more Said <laughs> Jesus, we will be back tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Gosh, what a oh, wonderful praying with 200 people. Wow, it's beautiful. beautiful. Especially uh, the Sorrowful Mysteries today and after before Dawn's presentation. Before we get back to Don, I just want to encourage you, if you're new to this, uh, you can go to divinemercyforamerica.org, click on the membership tab and uh, fill out the form and get connected. And we send out the link for this uh, this holy hour. It's uh, from the first of the month. We, ha we have several different novenas we do throughout the year. We're currently doing a 54-day novena from Ash Wednesday to Mercy Sunday. We also do the the famous uh, Novena to the Divine Mercy that begins on Good Friday. We send out daily emails 
on that so you can get connected at divinemercyforamerica.org. We try to make it as easy as possible, as easy as possible. Even when you click on, you just click on and the prayers are right there. You can read them. You can hear them. So let's, Don, let's go back to you for just a second and then we'll open it up for any questions. I know you've got so much to share. We just have to have you back. Yeah. <laughs> Every month. It was beautiful. It was beautiful, so beautiful presentation. Powerful. Thank you, Don. Is there anything in particular that you just uh, wanted to add briefly? Uh, uh, you know, if, if I could share my phone number, if, if um, anybody wants to get in touch with me for a presentation, um, my, let me give you my email. D N O H S four four at gmail.com. And I'll give my phone 631 area code 275 8487. Uh, otherwise, you could just get in touch with uh, Dave and Joan, and uh, they can get in touch with me if anybody's interested in uh, yeah, well, having it. I'll put that in the chat. Let me just confirm that D. Can you read that, honey? N O H S, his last name, 44 at gmail.com. Right. And yes. it's 631 275 8487. That's it. That's right. It is in the chat now, and you are located where? So people know kind of your proximity. Long Island, New York. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> Do you want me to put that in the YouTube the, uh, description? Yeah, Long I to... Yeah, uh, I, I live in Bayshore, Long Island, New York. Awesome. We've been there. <laughs> oh, Beautiful. Bayshore? Yeah, I think so. Well, we've been oh, everywhere. Cool. Green Lacombe says, uh, yes, me too. <laughs> oh, awesome. Who? Marlene oh. Lacombe. Do you know oh, in Bayshore? Yeah, that's what she Bayshore. said. Awesome. Oh, very nice. Very nice. All right. You so go, girl. <laughs> uh, the, other, the other thing I just like to uh, also, um, if anybody would like to join the confraternity, again, there's no dues, there's no requirements, but um, but there are spiritual benefits. You, you Mass is said for every member living and deceased worldwide. Uh, you're going to have to look it up, though. The, the monastery, St. Paul of the Cross in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yes. Ask for Father Don Weir, W E I R, and and tell him Don knows said to, to to call, and he'll send you information on uh, on the confraternity of the Passion. Okay, so we're going to try to put that in the chat. It's the confrat confraternity of the Passion. Right, confraternity of the Passion, and that's administered out of Saint Paul of the Cross Monastery. St. Paul of the Cross Monastery. Okay. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right. We've got some Pennsylvanians here. Pittsburgh. So they can call. Uh, you can just yeah, look ask, it up, y'all. Ask for Donald. Right. They have to, yeah, I don't have it on top of my head. Ask for Donald, Father Donald Ware, W-E-I-R, Passionist Priest. He's in charge of the confraternity there. That's in the chat. Okay, fabulous. And we'll put that in the description of the okay. YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. Okay. Yes, that's it. Yep. All right. Okay. So if that covers all of our business here, so yep. I'm gonna let's yep. let's see uh see if anybody's got any questions, comments. All right. Yes, Sue, or is that a question? Unmute, honey. Yes, ma'am, I do. Um, Don, it was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. But, uh, I, I have been getting, in fact, I do the novena, no. um, every day, uh, to the, the face of Jesus. And I, I have the little flyers, the, the little trifles, and I have a terrible hard time getting them. I, I have a Canadian address and that's about it. Okay. Can you help me? So that's the Holy Face Association, I assume you're talking about. In, in uh, yes, yeah, I you know I don't have any information in front of me, but um, uh, uh, what are you looking for for the right? This yeah, hold, this is the yep. novena, and then the smaller one I don't have it with me right now. It's it's a, right. just a trifold. Well, what's the problem you're encountering? You can't get in touch uh, with them. Yeah, I I write to them and I ask them for something. I have a. a Quebec, Canada address. Yeah. yeah. 
there should be a, there should be a phone number on there. You can call Brother uh, uh, Doe. No, I, I do not have a phone number. Okay. There's a website. They have a website, um, Holy Face Association. I, I, don't, I don't have the phone number on my top of my head here, so I, I, that's why I'm trying to help you with. Um, but okay. look up Holy Face Association to their website, and they'll give you contact information where you All can right. get in touch with them without having to write to them. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So you are very welcome, darling. All right. So Christina has her hand up. Hello, Christina. You have a question? Hi, thank you so much. Yes, I do. Uh, I really enjoyed the presentation. Donald was showing, uh, it, it was a book, right? With the holy face and then the blood. Yes. Oh, oh the, it's a cover of a book. Yes. That's the thing. I'm wondering, do you have that book in English? Or like, what's the name of it in English? Yeah, it's it's not in English, but but also it's not, I, I can't see you. <laughs> I know, I don't want you to right now. I'm a little rough right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> so, uh, but- Here, um, my face. Hi. Okay, no, that's, that's cool, good. But I don't, <laughs> this is, I'm gonna show it to you, actually. This is, it's the cover of a book. The, it's not the whole book. They, oh. they put the cover off. Once this bled, they took the cover off. Oh. You know? So that's it. So it's just, it's the, it's the, this is the original. This is, it's, it's signed by the witnesses on the back. But, oh. um, and, and I have the home declaration of the bishop, which is important from the home bishop that this event was a supernatural event and did take place. So it's fully church approved, this, this, uh, uh, this image don okay. uh, you didn't yeah can you explain because you, i don't think you really got into that about what happened how did I that did. yeah okay um in uh 1950 uh, well you know what that's why i said to look up conchetta pantusa and you'll see the history the house of the holy face in the arola italy now there were a number uh, there were a number of bleeding images um, there was so much supernatural activity going on, and it's all church approved. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but this is the declaration. I have the declaration. I take this with me because this is very important uh, from the home bishop authenticating the events. But um, there was so much supernatural activity happening at this house that the, the Vatican stepped in. Now, the image... There was a, there's another image in Italy. There's two surviving images. One's in Italy, and this is the, the other one in my possession. But the one in Italy and this one, it bled so profusely, you, you could see that the, the corporal soaked up all the blood. Uh, the other image, they kept in a loose leaf book of blank papers. The blood, it bled so profusely that it, the blood seeped through the back and formed holy face pictures on the following pages, just out of blood. Uh, 14 of those images are right now in the Vatican archives. Um, and so this is all church approved. And um, that's, the, uh, that's the story of this. Now, uh, there was an unbroken link, but you know, uh, unless you know the history, um, we know Sister Mary of St. Peter, uh, where we get the golden arrow. And then we have Sister Pierina with the medal. And now Pierina's spiritual director, Abbot Hildebrand, knew Father Bonaventura, who was the spiritual director to Concetta Pantusa, uh, who owned this image. Uh, then Father Bonaventura- A little bit later tonight. Oh, how are you, Marie? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I, I thought someone was talking. And, and then Conchetta Pantusa uh, died. Her spiritual director, Abbot Hildebrand, I'm sorry, Pierina's spiritual director, knew Father Bonamatora, who gave the image to Mama. So there's an unbroken link. But when this image was given to Mama Geely, he said, you have to bring this to the United States and promote the devotion. God has many graces to give to those who will venerate this image. Now there's another invocation added. Uh, now what I do is, is I make, uh, uh, I, I add 
prayers of reparations for the whole world, for all sin. We have to move on from the Middle Ages. Um, with Sister Mary of uh, St. Peter, with the golden arrow, it was pretty much a reparation for the first three commandments, um, blasphemy, um, anyway, um, desecration of the Eucharist. But, uh, but during her time, there was not many, it, it, sin was, was prevalent, but not as prevalent as it is today. Today, there's many more ways to sin, and you could sin at the click of a button, click of a in, mouse button. A major British assault. So, so we include more now. The devotion went from France to Italy, fine. now to the United States. Um, so anyway, so this particular image, I, I try to explain about grace. It's not something you always feel. It's the soul that receives grace. You don't physically feel the soul. It could be for something in the future, maybe to overcome a severe temptation. Uh, that God gives you the grace today to you might not realize what it is today you know, until sometime in the future. Well, you might you might re you realize what the grace is today. You might receive a healing. You, you might receive a, a conversion of somebody you prayed for. So um, I hope that explains a little bit more. But yeah. this image here, I bring out. Um, it was when it came to the United States, mama showed it to people that she felt God compelled her to show it to. And she showed it to me when I was 18. You know, she said, God wants me to show you this. But she kept it in a, in a cabinet. And then when she died in the 80s, Father Dante Di Girolamo from the Archdiocese of Newark took possession of this image. And for 20 years, kept it locked away and the National Shrine of St. Gerard, St. Lucy's in Newark, New Jersey. That's where our headquarters was. Um, but I remind you Father Dante. Father Dante, when he was dying, he asked me to take over the organization. But just prior to that, I says, Father, I says, you know, one of the messages from Father Bonaventura was, God has many graces to, go, to give to those who will venerate this image. How is anybody gonna receive a grace if we continue to keep it locked away? He knew what I was talking about. He trusted me. Uh, he says, take it out, Don. You know, you, you know what it is? Uh, at one time, if you had a reputation, now again, not me, but if you had a reputation for being holy, like Padre Pio, people would come from all over the world to be in their presence, to pray with them, to be in their presence. Today, if you have a reputation for, for being holy, you, you look down as a kook. Um, and I said to Father Dante, I says, Father, people aren't going to come to Jesus anymore. Now we have to bring Jesus out, you know. So that's what I do. I bring the image out and, and let anybody who God calls or anybody who would like to venerate this image. I don't keep it locked away. And I'm very hands on. I took it out of the cabinet. I do treasure it. Okay. But I wanted to make it a little more powerful. So I, I, I put it in the actual wrappings that was full of blood this, the blood is blood type a b it was analyzed in the, in the year 2000 and uh, blood type a b is the same blood type that's on the shroud same blood type on the holy sudarium this is jesus's blood blood type a b is very rare in the west okay maybe one percent of the population it's more prevalent in the middle east and in particular amongst jews this is jesus's blood isn't that the same blood type from uh, the eucharistic miracles not all, but many. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So thank you so much for explaining uh, the image and sharing it with us. It was, again, so powerful. Um, and yep. Go ahead. I, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I, no, I just wanted to say something else. If there's anybody out there that, you know, I always want to get outside of the church. You know, so it, it was a, it's a great desire to bring Jesus out. You know, I'm thinking of renting like a movie theater, you know, theaters and to bring Jesus out for the public, you know, to, to come, you know. Um, so I've got that in the plans. I mean, if anybody else comes up with ideas, you know, for presentations or, or um, get in touch with me, you know, I'm, I'm planning a 12th of July when I feel I'm going to be able to go to this time to the West Coast, California, Arizona, Texas. Mexico. So um, I'm planning a countrywide tour. And I have to give kudos to those in the Philippines that tuned in because 
We started at four o'clock. It was four o'clock in the morning in the Philippines. So for them to wake up and tune in, kudos to them, you know? So, um, so listen, you guys, I, I, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you, you know, for, uh, for this opportunity to share the passion, you know? Wow, it was really powerful. I'm going to go ahead and let's look at uh, if anybody else has got any questions. You know, Don, <clears throat> while he's doing that, um, while we were praying, I was thinking about you coming back through here and I thought, oh gosh, you know, maybe we should just rent, just like what you said, a, a, a hall or a, a, yeah. a hotel or yeah. something like that. Because sometimes to get it in the church is not an easy thing to do. Um, yeah. It, it, in some places it is there's there's great priests but that's not to be a deterrent we can meet anywhere and and so when you just said that about a movie theater or something i thought oh, holy spirit thought all right anybody else with a a comment or a question i'd be interested to hear any comments about when we got to pray and touch the holy face how you all felt or somebody asked the relics whose relics Oh, that's about, those are the same. Yesterday we had Bobby Contreras, who you guys are friends, and Bobby shared his picture of the holy face of the uh, the St. Michael cave rocks. I, I do. Oh, cool. Yes, I'm going to have a couple more. I should be getting them on Monday. So if you want a relic from St. Michael's uh, cave in Italy, I will have them. You go to divinemercyforamerica.org, divinemercyforamerica.org. And um, uh, make a uh, we're, we're requesting a donation to cover because we give Father a donation for these, and, and then to ship them to you for twenty dollars, or if you want to help support our ministry more, but um, and put in the comment that it's for Saint Michael Rock. And I don't have a whole lot, but if you need a, just a couple, um, we can do that. What about renting a travel vehicle like a bus? And that's how you are going to travel, right, Don? You're going to be traveling. Yeah, actually. Van. actually Actually, I have a minibus now slash camper, and, and and my display is in a trailer, um, and I I drive. Now the individual, I think I told you, the individual who gave me that bus gave me a larger one, a newer one. Uh, um, you know Ralph. Yeah, great guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's. I'm, I'm going to be working on that bus. So probably I'm looking July to head out on a tour you know and uh you, you know i don't know if you know this but i went to arizona with the holy face um because the 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 church of satan had a convention so we spent three days outside the convention prayerfully you know uh, peacefully praying you know so i had to take the image out of that cabinet so i could fly with it and i kept it on my person now, you know it's, this is something you don't put in the luggage compartment you know what i mean so i i put it in, an, in, a, in a smaller frame and kept it on my person went to arizona and and um if, you, if anybody looks up my name on youtube they'll they'll see a lot of these videos i did a documentary on the, on the holy shroud did a documentary on the holy face um which is all on on youtube you, you know the Holy Face devotion is the only devotion on the face of the planet that has apostolic origin. Jesus made this image. St. Jude, the apostle, was the first one to carry the Holy Face. Again, yeah, it's a long story, but you can see that on my documentary on, on the Holy Face devotion. And we have uh, one of the last time you were with us was on uh, in the beginning of March last year. It was Shrove Tuesday which is yeah. the Tuesday right before Ash Wednesday, because we were meeting and we did a wonderful, you did a great talk then too. So you could go to our what, our YouTube channel, Divine Mercy for America on YouTube and put in Don Nose, Nose and it'll, uh, it should come up for you there. If you can't find it, send us a note and we will um, send you all the link to that one. It was very powerful too. Uh, um, somebody just there was a phone number 516 area code i think that's nassau county but somebody just asked something just before that oh uh something about an image how to get the image how do i get a copy of the image of the holy face okay so if they email me i could email a copy of this otherwise i sell them at the presentations but if you email me i can email it to anyone and they could they can uh print one out print it out Along with, with a prayer of reparation, 
you know, um, this is how the, the devotion now advanced, you know, from France to Italy to the States. I made a chaplet to the Holy Face, and uh, I encourage now an act of reparation, just like we did today here, to touch the face of Jesus, you know. So if you have one of these images, you know, you, you put it in your house and you, with a spirit of reparation, soothing the wounds of Jesus, touch his face, we'll give him a kiss, you know. Uh, my email? Yeah, we'll put it, he's going to put it back in there. So I just put it back in okay. the chat. But let's okay. say it uh, out loud if someone's viewing on YouTube. Yep. D as in Donald, N as in Nancy, O as in Oscar, H as in Harry, S as in Sam, 44 at gmail.com. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Again, another question about the rock. You go to our website, Divine Mercy for America. Uh, you, or... you can follow this link that I'm putting in the chat. Okay. And uh, make a donation for it with a note. Say, I would like a St. Michael rock. St. Michael. And can I just ask Don a question? So when we send you an email, we should ask specifically for a copy of the Holy Face, correct? Y yes. Yes, just say that you were on the conference call and 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 uh, you're, you're asking for an image and I'll um, email it to you. Somebody just asked about Arizona. Yeah, what happened what? when you went with the Satan? Okay, worshipers? right. So um, so we were outside. Uh, I don't know if you know Jesse Romero, and there was a it was about it was a good crowd, about three hundred of us uh, outside of the convention center. It was the first convention that they there was they always have different meetings around the states, but this was the first convention that they held where they came from all over. Uh, when they first advertised their convention, it was sold out the first day. So it, it, you know what what got to me was the, the number of youth uh, that um, and they're not all they're not all. It's they're not all evil. They're duped. You know, there's like a screen over their eyes. You, you know, so. Um, but when you say what happened, this is this is what happened. I don't, I don't know what the person's asking. You know what happened there? But we prayed outside of the convention center. You know, and they had some pretty weird committee uh, meetings going on. Uh, you know, how, how to raise a child in a satanic household, Satan at the school activities. You know, really you know, bad stuff, you know, and, and they were indoctrinating youth, you know, so, um, so we went to pray and, and, and pray heavy, you know, and now however, however God works with any individual, that's between the Holy Spirit and, and them, but we certainly went there to pray, and, and I did, I, in fact, I held the holy face up over the fence, facing the convention center, and, and we, you know, we prayed, you, you know, that, God give give the grace, you know. You know. Um, you know, again, you know, giving grace, that's up to Jesus. You know, I'm just gonna tell you a quick story with the intercession of the Blessed Mother. Uh, I believe if it wasn't for the Blessed Mother, the second coming would have happened already. I think Jesus is that upset. Um, you know, as a good mother, she's holding back the hand of her son, you know. But um uh, the Blessed Mother is a powerful powerful uh, intercessor. I'm going to uh, tell you, uh, you know, Jesus was visiting heaven one day, you know, and um, he said to St. Peter, he says, Peter, let's take a walk around heaven. I want to see what's happening here. And he saw somebody, he says, Peter, who's that? Peter says, Jesus, I, I don't know. And Jesus says, what do you mean, Peter, you don't know? He said, I don't know. He said, well, who's that over there? And Peter said to Jesus, I, I don't know, Jesus. I don't know who that is. Jesus says, Peter, what you, how could you not know? I don't know. Well, who's that over there? Jesus, I don't know. Peter, I gave you the keys of the kingdom. How come you don't know? And Jesus, it's your mother. She has another key. <laughs> She's letting them in. So what a powerful, you know, intercessor. Gemma Galgani, passionate saint, very popular. I'm sure you're familiar with her. Was praying for a sinner. And uh, she asked Jesus in ecstasy. Her spiritual director was listening to this conversation between herself and Jesus. And Gemma said, Jesus, give my sinner the grace for conversion. And Jesus said, no. 
And again, Gemma asked Jesus, Jesus, I'm praying for his conversion. He's my sinner. I'm praying for him. Give him the grace for conversion. No, Gemma. He doesn't accept my grace. Again, she pleaded with Jesus. Jesus, I was a sinner and you forgave me. I'm praying, give him the grace for conversion. No, Gemma, it's final. I'm not giving him the grace for conversion. You know what she said to Jesus? Well, if you won't, I'm going to go to your mother. Now, that, that was a real event. And she did that. This is in the biography. Anybody can read it, Gemma Galgani. And what happened was the spiritual director left, went back to his rectory. The secretary came in and said, Father, there's a gentleman here who wants to know if you could hear his confession. When this guy came in, he starts confessing his sins. The priest knew that this was the individual that Gemma was praying for. It was through the Blessed Mother, her intervention, uh, that Jesus gave the grace, you know. So very powerful uh, intercessor, you know, uh, a Blessed Mother. So. Well, there there are all these satanic things going on, whether there's a convention or not. I mean, they're just yes. coming out. You know, it's like they are there. And that's why we have to be praying for their conversion. Again, I'm going to just say Mercy Sunday. Pray, 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 pray that these people, I don't know, maybe the warning will come before then because, uh, you know. Well, you know, there's a time. We're in the time of mercy. And I think personally, I think we're coming out of the time of mercy. You know, there's another message that Jesus gave to Faustina. Prepare the world for my final coming. Mm -hmm. You know, now, uh, that's serious. You know, prepare the world for my final or second, you know, coming. Uh, so that's what we have to look at. Now, even in the catechism, it says, now this is where the shroud comes in again, that, that the state of the burial cloths prepared the disciples to encounter the risen Christ. You know, so, um, but we're coming into that time. You know, it's, it's Jesus is coming back. I think this is the time the mother's holding his hand and it's the last time, look, after mercy, you know what I mean? Um, and, and I think it makes sense if we have this warning that they talked about a Garabandal and, and St. Faustina yeah. did too. Um, that and like you uh, alluded to or mentioned that it, we believe it happened in Fatima, that people see the state of their souls and many people have already experienced this um, yes. as as a true act of mercy. And then That's it makes it. sense. It makes That's sense it. that we have the feast of mercy where Jesus said, "Make sure everybody knows, no matter right. how terrible your sins are, the greater the sinner, the rate, the greater the right to my mercy. And I want this feast day to be celebrated. I want everybody to know about it. I mean, he made you it very what, clear. He said it over and over again. <laughs> and there's a reason what you for just it. Said? What you just said, John, this is about mercy. It's not a warning. It's a warning, but it's because God's merciful. You know, he's he's having us to see our souls as if we were standing before him. That is a huge act of mercy. He can let us go to stay on the wrong path. He, because of his mercy, he's giving us this, you know, to, to look at our souls, you know, and then, and then it's up to us to receive the grace to, to change our ways. We don't have to, you know, Jesus healed 10 lepers, only one came back to thank him. You know, he doesn't bend arms. You know what I mean? But if he gives us that opportunity to see the state of our souls, so because in order to encounter him, if we're not ready, you know what I mean? So we have to take care now, not focus on threats, but let's look at the state of our souls now on our own. And that's that's what I like to right. get across as the greatest act of mercy, you know. Beautiful. Well, when the warning happens too, remember, uh, we're going to see the state of our souls, but we, uh, the state of our souls also includes the good that we have done and how happy the Lord is with us, you know, and we, we you know, look forward to, yes, I want to see the things I'm doing wrong so I can amend my life, but also to have that sense we're, of joy of, you know, he's well, we're, well, we're going to say, we're going to see the good we failed to do mm -hmm. okay, a sense of omission. And so it's that's the warning, you know, 
Um, so we're going to see what we failed to do. We're going to see the state of our soul as it is, what we did, the sins we did, and what we failed to do. You, you know, so yeah, it's it's a it's a serious thing, but it's for our benefit. Right. You know? Beautiful. So um, anyway. Well, all right. Well, guys, uh, we could probably sit here and chit chat uh, for hours. Yeah, yeah. hours. <laughs> <laughs> It's been wonderful. If anybody has another specific question, we'll just do a quick one, but then we're going to have to take off. We'll be here again tomorrow. Tomorrow is Father Stefan Starzynski from Fairfield, Virginia. What a beautiful holy priest. Um, he is the chaplain at a huge hospital uh, in Virginia and is constantly bringing mercy to the sick and the dying there. He's a spiritual director of many all right so iphone has their hand up yes ma'am oh that's um yeah, the microphone is off do you have any um more information on joey um that you knew um fran a, a friend of ours fran she's going to be 103 she knew him and worked for him and did rosaries and scapulas for him to uh, bring all over wherever he went but um we we saw pictures that there were that he drew even though he was blind and um padre pio healed part him in part but he was he still was very very um gifted in so many different ways and i was just wondering if you have any talks on on that miracle or on him or on the works that he did um i was just wondering about that well, Joey, Joey was full of zeal uh, yeah. to promote Garabandal, you, you know, but uh, I'm not familiar with him doing any art. Uh, I'm not familiar with that at all, as a matter of fact. But uh, no, I, Joey was my brother's godfather. He was, he was family, you know. So, um, no, very, uh, Joey was very daring. Uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but if anybody knew him, when he was blind, you know, we used to have these all night vigils. A couple of times, you know, his brothers, especially Leo, was like a a, a clown, you know, like me, you know. But Joey was blind. And uh, Leo says, Joey, you're going to drive home from church. <laughs> and Joey was okay. So he got behind the wheel. Now, Leo was right next to him in the front seat, you know. As I, Joey, slide to the right, slide to the left, you know, ready to put the brake on or this or that. But Joey drove home from church blind. So he was, he was, he was very daring. That Joe, all the brothers were, you know, very, uh, very daring. But I'm, I'm not familiar with him doing any artwork. Not, not at all, as a matter of fact. And so, um, but as far as information on Joey, you, you, you know, he's dead. He, you know, he passed away. Um, so, and I'm not familiar with Fran. Now, Joey's sister's name was Fran. So I don't know if you're referring to her, but, you know, when you said she, <laughs> excuse me. I didn't, I didn't say anything. I'm just listening to you. Oh, but I, Fran, no. um, Fran, uh, you know, I don't know what her maiden name was, but I, uh, she, you know, she was married and all, but she's, she lives here in Shirley too. So um, I'll email you more. We'll, you know, sure. You're on Long Island? Yes. Oh, live, okay. Oh, you're out east. In Shirley. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, good. All good. right. Well, All we right. have Jackie's got a question and this will be our last question for the, for the evening. Okay, okay Jackie. Did you have a question, Jackie? Yeah, Jackie, you need to turn your microphone on. I was looking on your website and I couldn't find where um, to go to that St. Michael Rock to order it. So I just wanted you to explain that a little bit. More. <laughs> it's not on, we don't sell them. So you have to just go and make a donation. So just go to the okay. donate page. Okay, okay, yeah. donate and then- donate. Just and, okay, got and it. then it put in the note, you know, it's for the rock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. You're welcome. God bless you. Yep. All right, Don. Well, um, we'll look forward to seeing you in Texas this summer. God willing, we'll see what we can yep. work out and have you back yep. on, on our, our program. Um, 
before too long. So thank you so much for all the time you spent with us and all the information and for helping us, letting us pray and touch the holy face of Jesus and venerate him. It was truly um, moving and beautiful. So we will keep, oh, keep you, doing our prayers. All right, there's thank Bobby. You. There's Bobby. I just, I just saw him. <laughs> hey, Bobby. He's with Father Peter. He's been there with well, Father Peter. <laughs> does he hear me? He's saying shh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sorry, Rob. We already we already had the last question. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's at a muted. You're, you're muted. You're muted, Bobby. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, God bless you. Uh, thank you, Don. We'll get together and. Uh, uh, <laughs> all your hard work and god bless you and thank you thank you for thank what you, you do and thank you working with us we hope we can bring you to south texas yeah is that your son yes my son how Diego Martin Peel. how old he, is he, he he he's a uh he, let me see he's 13. oh no you had, you had to think about that huh rob <laughs> yes everybody wave he's a good man <laughs> thank you thank you god bless you all right, all right. Peterson, hi God bless you all. All right, everybody. Come okay. back tomorrow yeah, in the, the next four days. And uh, Don, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again yeah, so much. Sure. God bless you all. Haven Joan, signing off for now. Amazing.